What does Powell say to the president to afford Fed independence and also not upset the June meetings and beyond? Well, I, I don't know if there's much that the, the Fed can really tell the White House at this point regarding their policy pathway. Chair Powell has been very clear that they're going to remain data dependent, uh, but they are focused on inflation. So if we continue to see these inflation numbers remain elevated, they're going to continue along with their 50 basis point increases. More than anything, I think this meeting is about the White House and about President Biden being able to convince the American people that he is very much focused on inflation. And by having Powell come to the White House, by having this, this roundtable, he's giving that perception to the American people that he's focused, that he's putting pressure on the Fed to do whatever they need to do to rein in inflation. Well, so it's giving the appearance of, of the, again, the White House being focused, but it's also giving that subtle indication of finger pointing at the Fed that it's been a monetary policy mistake and not a fiscal policy mistake. Okay, but mistake. that's a look back. we got to look forward, and the look forward is simple. Is job formation breaking? Are we finally, are you seeing tea leaves of a labor slowdown? Not yet. We, see, we still saw a very strong April employment report, and we do expect to still see a very solid, very positive May employment report. As the unemployment rate remains well below what the Fed has told us is their full employment range, well below 4%, we aren't seeing the indications of sideline workers coming back online. We aren't seeing indications of those 11.5 million job vacancies slowly being filled. We're still seeing a record demand for labor and the supply side is falling well short. So we're not yet at a point where we can say that tightness in the labor market is beginning to ease. Have we even seen peak inflation on a mechanical level, Lindsay? I, I think it's too early to call the peak level of inflation. I know the market is very anxious to call peak prices, but as we still are waiting for some of the earlier pressures, uh, as these second, third, fourth round of lockdowns that occurred overseas, remember it takes months for those to seep into the data. So we haven't yet felt the true and the full impact of those earlier policy responses filter down into the numbers. Now, yes, we are taking steps in the right direction. As you just mentioned, China does seem to be easing some of those protocols. So we could see some price relief as we move further into the second half of the year. But at this point, as we're awaiting some of that May data, we look to June, those earlier policy measures are still going to provide upward pressure on prices. Lindsay, some people say it matters where the inflation comes from. If it's supply chain driven, if it's commodity driven, then perhaps the Fed won't go as hard to try to crimp demand because, frankly, they don't need to uh, create a real problem for the labor market and for demand just to deal with something that largely is considered temporary. Do you think that that's changing? Do you think that that nuance has no place at this point? No, I think the Fed is very aware of the fact that the vast majority of price pressures have stemmed from the supply side of the equation, rendering traditional policy metrics less effective. To your point, as the Fed raises the cost of capital, that can tap down consumption and tap down investment, but it does nothing to alleviate the price pressure stemming from these supply chain disruptions still lingering in the aftermath of the COVID-19 crisis or those being exacerbated now by international well, conflict. Not that they're going to play the parlor game in the Oval Office today, but what's your terminal rate now? Are you in a, a lower 3% band of where the Fed's heading, or do you go gloomy and show a restrictive Fed out above 4%? I think the Fed is very aware that the U.S. economy is already showing signs of easing, that we're already seeing cracks in the armor. When we look at the consumer, yes, they're still spending, but why are they spending? How are they able to spend? They're now drawing down savings at a very marked rate. And so going further into the second half of the year, where is that support coming from? It's likely to ease precipitously. So the Fed does have to acknowledge that. I think they well, are acknowledging that. And I think we move into 25 basis points sooner rather than later. Okay, I, I guess that's something that President Biden wants to hear. What part of 7 or 8% inflation then is transitory? Do we go back to 5 or 4 or dare I say the nirvana of 2%? Well, I think the Fed is very optimistic that they're going to see lower levels of inflation, but they're not uh, they're not forecasting 2% inflation anytime soon. For the Fed, it's about the directional momentum. And the Fed is optimistic that in the second half of the year, we'll continue to see a slower pace of price appreciation. So that second derivative decline coming into, uh, in, into realized 
uh, territory. But in the in 2023, that's where the Fed is very optimistic that we're going to see this precipitous downward trend yeah. in inflation towards 4% maybe even 3%, but getting to that 2% or below, that's going to take several years uh, time before we get to that range. The intention to get inflation down, Lindsay, is one reason why Mike Wilson of Morgan Stanley thinks that this is a bear market rally and that there's more downside, because frankly, anything that was a Fed put earlier is going in the opposite direction. The Fed actually wants to see a tightening in financial conditions and won't be happy if there's too much of a rally, if yields come in too much, because frankly, that moves in the opposite direction from what they're trying to achieve. Do you agree with that? Do you think that there is a sort of uh, eye uh, toward the markets and what that means for financial conditions by the Federal Reserve? Well, remember, the Fed is, is very much focused on financial market stability. They're not targeting yields per se, but yes, they would like to see the market respond to what the Fed uh, has already done. That being said, they have other tools in their tool belt to continue to push, uh, especially longer rates higher. Drawing down the balance sheet, they're going to be ramping that up. If they're not comfortable accelerating the pace of rate increases, as we, as we suggest, the economy is already slowing. 50 basis points may not be doable as we move into the fourth quarter or even later in the third quarter, they can resort to balance sheet reduction at a faster pace, which will provide nice upward pressure to the longer end, or at the very least, provide a floor to longer rates. And Lindsay, just quickly, if I'm in this market, I just want the answer to one question. Who do I listen to, President Bostick or Governor Waller? I, I think at this point we need to listen to both because what that tells us is that policymakers answer. themselves, it, it is a very economist answer, absolutely. But I, I think this tells us that, that policymakers themselves are uncertain about the direction of, uh, of rates, that there's a very fruitful debate going on among policy officials as to where the economy is going, where rates are going to go. And that's going to, I think, add volatility to this marketplace. So investors need to be aware that there could be some sort of change up, if you will, in terms of the policy pathway. It's not on a predetermined course.